Hello YouTube, fellow math students and fellow math teachers. Devor here, we're going to be doing the first task in module one of the Mathematics Vision Project Math One curriculum. This task is called Checkerboard Borders. By the end of this video, you should be able to have a positive reaction to the following ICANN statements. You should be able to generate multiple numerical and algebraic expressions to represent a visual pattern. You should be able to explain how each part of the expression relates back to the original pattern. You can define an equivalent expression, and you can explain how to use equivalent expressions to highlight different parts of a problem. Here's the problem that we're looking at. In the textbook, it says that we are helping Elvira retile the floor of the cafeteria. You can also think about it as retiling a bathroom or perhaps a kitchen at home. We start with a 5x5 five five square of white tiles in the middle of our design. We want to do a checkerboard border, yeah, checkerboard border, funny, here on the outside of our square of white tiles, alternating blue and white tiles. What we want to be able to figure out is how many blue tiles we need to order. This is a good practical problem because sometime in your lifetime you might want to retile a bathroom or a kitchen. And if you want to do something fancy, well, you need to figure out how many of each tile you want to order. Last thing you want is to have your project get derailed because you didn't order enough tiles, or just have tiles sitting in the back of a truck not being used. You just wasted money. For our purposes, here, here's what I want you to do to answer this problem. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to count up the number of tiles in this picture. If you're having problems figuring out how to solve this problem, uh, figure out how many tiles there are to start with, and then use your pencil, maybe print it out, and I want you to break up this border into parts and figure out how to use those parts to count up the number of tiles. In the end, you want some kind of an expression based on the side length of this inside square, so on this 5x5 five five square. So that all you need to do is just plug in your side length of this square and figure out exactly how many tiles you need to order. Some popular methods that I've seen have been people cutting off the corners, so cutting off these four corners, and then figuring out how many are in the straights left around. I've had people do cut this into four straight sets of tiles where there's two longs on each side and two shorts there in the middle. Please make sure you don't overcount. I've also had people figure out how, how many tiles would be in the whole design if this part wasn't checkered in the middle and then subtracting out all the white tiles. So those are some things that I've seen and uh, I've, I've seen them all work, which is the point of this whole thing. So once you have that, once you've had an expression that you're happy with and you have a pattern that you are happy with, you can go on to the next part of this problem. The next part of this problem is just making a general form. Here we still have our original pattern where we have an S by S square of all white tiles here in the middle of our design. And we want to be able to figure out how many blue tiles to order. The problem hasn't changed, it's just that we don't necessarily know how many squares there are on the inside. So if you're having problems with this, some things to think about as you're figuring out how to go from the, uh, the first part where you knew exactly how many were in the middle to this one where you don't know exactly how many, take it in small chunks. See, if you're see how to make your expression work for a six by six square in the middle. And then maybe make it a little bit bigger, make it a 10 by 10. Get ambitious, make it a 100 by 100. Make sure that your method makes sense for everything that you're trying to make it for. But if you're having problems, don't hesitate to go in smaller steps. There's nothing wrong with having to do a little bit of woodshedding on it before you get the expression that you're looking for. 
So here's here's the thing that everybody is probably going to answer, is probably going to ask me, why the heck are we doing this? Well, the thing that we're really looking at and what we're playing with is what's called equivalent expressions. Equivalent expressions is multiple ways to write the same variable expression. Um, and it comes from the fact that we all see patterns differently. And even mathematicians see patterns differently. Mathematicians just have different processes. We're all different people, so we see things differently. However, we need to be able to ensure that our different world views will still make the problem work out how we need to. The point of this, ex the point of this activity is to be able to voice how you see the pattern to other people so that they can follow your steps and get the answer themselves, which is a skill that you will use quite literally anywhere. Any job, you need to be able to do that. All right. So in summary, as you finish this task and polish it for submission to me, uh, make sure that you are asking yourself the questions there on the right hand side. That way you are doing some kind of self check to make sure that we that we are both on the same page. If you're just really not sure, feel free to stop in during my office hours or uh, send me a message on my YouTube channel or even send me an email and I will help you as best I can. So that has been Mrs. DeVore's lesson on the task of checkerboard borders. And remember, keep being awesome.